you want to get a soil scanner set up. That's awesome. Uh, we've got to get our Raspberry Pi set up, and that involves a couple not terribly exciting steps, but uh, it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes of actual work. You might have some longer periods getting stuff set up. But this is going to be geared towards people who know almost nothing about computers. So bear with me if you know a lot of this. Uh, we'll try and tell you points where you can skip ahead or move forward quicker if you already know what you're doing. So first thing that we need to do is we need to download the Raspberry Pi operating system. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and click on Downloads. I'm going to navigate to Raspbian. And then I'm going to just download the zip file. If you're familiar with torrenting, uh, that might work faster for you. But if you're not sure, uh, just go ahead and download the zip. So a few quick notes while this is downloading. Uh, one, if you already have your Pi set up and it's on the network and it's fully up to date, you can go ahead and just skip ahead to the setting up your Pi for scanning section. Uh, two, if you haven't done that and you're not on a Mac, we're going to be following these instructions specific to the Mac OS. Uh, if you're not on a Macintosh and you're not super familiar with this type of process of writing to an SD card, just go to the Raspbian website or the Raspberry Pi website, go into the help and getting started section. They've got some really good information for any operating system. Um, that's about it. We've got this file downloading that might take you five minutes, half an hour, an hour, depending on your internet connection. Uh, you will need an SD card. Uh, 16 gigs or 32 gigs is going to be a lot better for what we're doing. We're scanning lots and lots and lots of high resolution images. So a four gigabyte SD card might work, but you're gonna run out of space to save those images very quickly. So 16 gigabytes, 32 gigabytes. Um, we'll resume this as soon as our files finish downloading. So that took about 10 minutes. Uh, finished downloading. I'm just gonna click on the download show and folder. And what we have now is a zip file. It's a compressed version of the image. And on a Mac, you can just double click on this or you can hit command O or command down arrow and that'll start uh, extracting the image file. This might take a little bit. Zip file uncompressed. We now have a .img file or an image file not to be confused with like a JPEG or a GIF. So we're just gonna go and follow the installation guide instructions on the raspberrypi.org website. If I scroll down I can choose the operating system uh, you've got two options here, the mostly graphical interface option or the command line version. We're just going to go ahead and get started with that. So I've got to open up the terminal and you can usually do that by clicking on the spotlight in the top right hand corner of your Mac and just type the words terminal. Yours might look a little bit different than what we see here. Right here at the command line it says go ahead and type disk util list. If you want you can copy and paste that but it's pretty brief. So disk util list, hit enter. This shows me the current drives connected. You can see we've got something called disk zero, disk one. Um, my SD card is not inserted right now. I'm gonna go ahead and actually put my SD card in now. Well, wait a moment, and you can either retype disk util list or you can just hit the up arrow and that'll bring up the last command and hit enter again. Now we see we have disk 0, disk 1, and this new drive, disk 3. This is important to note because these are parts of your actual computer's hard drive that you're typing on right now. We don't want to reformat those, and that's what we're going to do. We don't want to write over them. We want to write over disk 3. For you, this might be disk 4, this might be disk 2. Uh, so you don't want to follow my instructions explicitly. You want to see what it says here for you. So disk 3 is the SD card that I just inserted. That's what I'm going to want to work with. So the next line, unmount your SD card using the disk identifier to prepare for copying data to it. Lots of words. Disk util, unmount, disk. It's a capital D there. Slash dev, slash disk, and it says disk number. Mine is disk 3. That looks good. Hit enter. Successful. Now I need to copy the data to my SD card. So this can be a little difficult. I downloaded my uh, my image to the downloads directory if I type CD downloads and hit enter that'll take me to my downloads directory if I type LS that will list the current images or the current files in my downloads directory I've got two folders 2015 2016 and I've got these two files you can see the zip file and the image file that we decompressed from the zip so now that I'm in the right directory, this is going to make that next command a little easier. If I type sudo ddbs equals 1m, 
if or input file equals. So this is the image file. Now I can either try and type out this entire command or I can type 2016 dash and then hit tab and it auto completes as much as it can. I just need to fill in the rest with img. Output file equals slash dev slash ooh, running out of space slash dev slash our disk and the disk number and that was disk three. So basically what we're saying is copy the information from our image file onto the SD card that we just uh, that we just unmounted. I think this command looks good, but it doesn't hurt to double check. You don't want to overwrite the wrong disk here. Hit enter. Asks me for the password for this computer. Type that in. It says permission denied. So sometimes you might get this. So all I've done, I've ejected the SD card, I swapped which adapter I was using, check the disk util list, unmount again, double check we're still on disk 3, disk 3, and this is great, it looks like it's doing absolutely nothing, which is a good sign. If I hit control T, it tells me some information about how many bytes it's transferred. If I hit Control T again, that number's going up. So I've just got to sit and wait, but things are working. And all I did there was change out which adapter I was using. Still using the same micro SD card, just changed the adapter. So you might run into some issues here. There's some good information on the Raspberry Pi website. This might take five or 10 minutes. So we'll come back as soon as it finishes. This looks good. Uh, looks like the command completed. I'm going to go ahead and type disk util eject slash dev slash rdisk3. Again, that three is specific to my situation. Hit enter. The SD card's ejected. I can pull that out of my computer. And now I'm ready to put this into my Raspberry Pi, uh, connect a network cable to it, and power it up. So that'll be the next step. We'll see you there. I've just plugged the SD card into my Raspberry Pi. I plugged an Ethernet cable into it, which is connected to my home network connection or my router. And I also plugged in the power cable. So it's up and running, but I don't have a keyboard, mouse, or monitor plugged into it. If you are in a situation where you are plugged in with a keyboard, mouse, or monitor, you can skip over this next section. But it might be interesting for you to know as well, too, because you can actually do a ton of stuff with your Raspberry Pi without ever having an actual keyboard, mouse, or monitor connected to it. So I need to figure out the IP address of my Pi. Uh, that's its, its internet address, uh, in this case specific to our local network. Um, if you have an HDMI monitor plugged in, that's usually one of the last things you'll see on the screen right before the login prompt. But if you don't have a monitor plugged in, how do you figure out the IP address? Uh, there's a few different ways. Uh, first, your router is going to assign the Raspberry Pi its internet address. So if I can figure out my router's IP address, then maybe I can figure out some information from its web interface. I'm currently connected via Wi-Fi. There's my Wi-Fi connection. If I go to Network Preferences, and I go to Advanced, and then TCP IP, I can see that my router's IP address is 192.168.1.254. So I can copy that, and cancel out of this, I'm going to just paste that in my web browser, and that conveniently will load up a web page that will list all the currently connected devices to that router. Uh, so you can see I have something called SoilCam, that's the one that I've had up and running, connected via an Ethernet connection. And then I have this other device, Raspberry Pi, connected via Ethernet. So this is the one that I just booted up. When you use a Raspbian image, uh, the default name of your, of your Pi is going to be called Raspberry Pi. If I click on Details, that will give me the IP address of that Raspberry Pi. So I can copy that. Now we can go to our terminal. And if you're on a PC, you can use software like Putty. If you're on a Linux machine, you already have the, uh, you just need to open up a command line interface. Uh, you can see the previous screen that we were at. Let's go ahead and clear that out. We're going to use something called SSH to connect to our Raspberry Pi. All right, so I've got the IP address, so I can type the command ssh pi at 
168.1.66. This is going to be different for you. This is the IP address for my Raspberry Pi. This is internal only. You can't really access this from outside um, your home network right now. I'm going to hit enter. This is the first time I'm connecting to this. Uh, it's asking, are you sure you want to connect? I feel comfortable with this. I'm going to hit enter. The default password for your Raspberry Pi is going to be Raspberry. And we've connected. So this is cool. You are connected from your Mac or your PC or your Linux machine over your network and you are now, for lack of a better term, you're inside your Raspberry Pi. Uh, and you can do pretty much anything you could do if you are directly connected with a monitor through this terminal interface. But we've got to get some basic stuff set up. We need to configure our Raspberry Pi uh, in a few different ways. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to type sudo raspy-config. Hit enter. It's going to ask us, do you want to expand the file system? Yes. Yes, we do. Go ahead and hit OK to that. If you want to change your password, generally a good idea. Set that to something a little bit different. Password changed. Uh, boot options. This is up to you if, you know, for me, I'm always connecting via the console. I'm never using, well, not never, I'm rarely using the desktop. Uh, if you change this, you know, and it, you get unexpected results, you might want to change it back. If you have an HDMI monitor connected and you like booting up into the GUI, you know, use one of these. But for me, we'll, we'll just auto boot into the console and we're not going to automatically log in. internationalization options. So set this to, you know, whatever locale you're currently at. I think default is Great Britain, somewhere along those lines, which is cool. But I'm not in Great Britain. Spacebar to select and deselect. UTF-8. Again, this is going to be dependent on your situation, where you live. Default EN UTF-8. So some quick comments. We expanded the file system. Uh, if you were using a 16 gig or 32 gig card, if you didn't expand the file system, that wouldn't allow you to use the entire SD card. You'd be limited to, I think, around 4 gigabytes. Uh, so that's really important. Changing the user password, default password is easy for anyone to guess, so that's really good to change. Um, changing locale, things like that, that's going to make sure that you know your Raspberry Pi gets the right date and time. It uses an internet connection to get that information. Um, Michigan. So that's good to choose. Uh, keyboard layout. You know, if you don't change this, when you hit certain keys, depending on where you're at, they might do unexpected things. So this is good to change to a local keyboard layout that you're familiar with. That often fails for me. I'm not really sure why. I might need to reboot before I can properly set that. Uh, a couple of things. You can add to Rastrack. That's kind of cool. It just shows on a, on a map roughly where you're at that other people can look at online. Um, I think that's about it. So we're going to go ahead and finish. It's going to ask to reboot. We'll hit yes. That's going to disconnect me. So I'm no longer connected to the Raspberry Pi. You can see that right here. Raspberry Pi takes not too long, maybe 30 seconds to a minute to come back up online. So that's what it says if it can't reach your device. Tried connecting too soon, so we'll hit the up arrow again and hit enter. Now it's back up and running, typing in the new password. Uh, so we've got the basics set up, but now we need to update our Raspberry Pi. Uh, there might have been a lot of bug fixes, changes, updated software to the default installation of software. I'm going to type sudo apt. What does sudo do? So, excuse me, sudo runs your command in a higher privileged mode. By default, your user doesn't have access to everything. And that's a good thing, because that makes it a little harder for you to break stuff. It also makes it a little bit harder for other stuff to break stuff. By typing sudo, that's going to run it in a higher level permission mode so that I can do commands that my normal user wouldn't be able to. Uh, you can think of it as super user do this. apt-get or apt-get, that's a packaging system that allows you to download and update software a little bit easier.
So this can take you know, a minute, it might take five minutes. Some of it's gonna depend on how long it's been since you've run this command. Uh, we're running the March 2016 release, so it's only been a month or two. So this usually goes by pretty quick. And right now we're just getting an updated list of available packages and versions. We're not actually updating any software in this step. We're just getting an updated list of what is out there. To actually update software, I type sudo apt git apt dash git upgrade. And that's actually going to upgrade all of the default installations that I've got on the Raspberry Pi if there are available updates. So, and this is where this might take a minute or two. This step can, can take quite a long time if it's been quite some time since, since you've run the command or since you downloaded and installed the OS. So things are, things are progressing along. We are, we are getting close to doing exciting things. Um, there's a number of additional software packages that we need to install. So I'm going to go ahead and type that out here, but you can copy and paste this from the instruction set sudo apt git dash dash yes dash dash force dash yes install apache 2 it's a web server sane and sane utils these are this is an amazing set of scanning software that works with a number of different scanners um, lib sane extras helps type things properly Image Magic. Image Magic is an amazing image uh, suite of tools um, for image editing and lib AV tools. So we're going to install a web server, some scanning software, some image manipulation software, and some video editing software. So one of the things we did was we installed a web server. So let's go ahead and see if that web server works. And go ahead and type in the IP address of my Pi. Cool, it works, excellent, so that's good. Uh, we're gonna make one change to Apache, that's the web server installation, and that's to make it a little bit easier for us to move files around. So if I go ahead, type cd tilde, that puts us in our home directory. We were already in, but it's good to just do that just in case you're not. I'm gonna make a directory called public HTML. So mkdir, that just says make directory. That tilde slash just said put it in our home directory. If I type ls, we have a directory called public HTML in here. I'm gonna type sudo a2nmod user directory or user dir. Um, and then I'm going to type sudo service apache to restart. So that just enabled a user directory specific uh, directory for serving web pages from the pi user directory. Uh, we're using Linux or a, a Linux operating system which really likes has really great support for multiple users. And typically, with what I'm doing, I only have one user. It doesn't make that big of a difference, but it still makes things a little more convenient. So if I want to access the directory that I'm now serving a web page from on my Raspberry Pi, specific to the Pi user account, I can type 192.168 1.6 slash tilde pi and that goes to the web server directory that's inside my pi user account um, so that's good that's working um, next we need to add a user to the scanner group so sudo, sudo user mod dash a dash g scanner pi enter so when we installed the sane software it created a, a group called scanner and we added the pi user to that scanner group. And that makes it a little bit easier for us to access the scanner from our pi user account without having to type sudo each time we want to make a scan. That's about it for all the basic setup. Oh, one last thing. Uh, if you want to shut down your Raspberry Pi, you don't want to just pull the power cable. 
It's kind of like pulling your USB drive or flash drive out of your computer without ejecting it properly, except instead of just being your USB drive, it's your computer operating system that you might corrupt. Um, or just a few files. So to properly shut down, you want to go to type sudo shutdown dash h now. And that just says halt and shut down the computer now. Hit enter. You'll get disconnected from your Raspberry Pi. And about 30 seconds later, once all the lights have stopped flashing, you can go ahead and unplug it. Uh, to turn it back on, you just plug it back in. It's okay to leave the cable plugged in while it's shut down. That's not a big deal. Uh, just to boot it back up, you just unplug and plug it back in. Or just plug it back in if it's already unplugged. And that's it. Cool. Next up, we've actually got to start getting things scanning and making sure the software all works. But uh, we'll leave this here for now. Cool.